Master years of centuries ago, in a small portion of this vast world of ours, there lived a people called the Children of Israel. From them came certain men and women through whom God revealed himself to all mankind. One of these was Gideon the Liberator. had given the people of Israel the land of Canaan, as he had promised. Under Joshua, the Israelites served the Lord and enjoyed his blessings. But as time went on, they made friends with the heathen tribes of Canaan and began to worship their idols. Chief among these was Baal, and the more the Israelites bowed down to the idol, the more trouble came upon them. Midianites a fierce desert people from the country southeast of Israel invaded the land, robbing and destroying, taking away even the crops and animals so that nothing was left for the people to eat. Many of the Israelites fled to the mountains and lived in caves like frightened animals. In their trouble, the Israelites remembered God and again cried to him for help. Then the Lord Jehovah sent a prophet to remind the people that they had brought all this trouble upon themselves. Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the place where you were slaves. I freed you from the Egyptians and from all your enemies, and I drove out the people ahead of you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are living. But you have not obeyed the Lord. The Israelites knew that the prophet had spoken the truth. And many of them were sorry and repented for the way they had broken God's commandment by worshiping the idols of the Amorites. Then God, in his mercy, planned to send someone to deliver them. One day, Gideon, the son of Joash, was threshing wheat in his vineyard, where the Midianites would not be likely to see him. Suddenly, he was aware that someone was watching him. An angel of the Lord had come to bring Gideon a message, but at first Gideon did not realize that this was a heavenly visitor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of courage. If the Lord is really with us, why then has all this happened to us? And what has become of the wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you, am I not? Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least important in my family. But I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites. If you are really pleased with me, then give me a proof that you are really speaking to me. Don't leave, I beg you, until I come back and bring you an offering. I will stay until you return. When Gideon returned with gifts of bread, meat, and broth, the angel of the Lord told him to place the bread and meat on a rock and pour the broth over them. Then Gideon received the proof for which he had asked. 
just as the burning bush had been a sign of God's presence to Moses, so the flaming food convinced Gideon that this was the Lord who was with him. But when Gideon turned to him again, the angel had disappeared. Then Gideon became afraid, but God spoke to him, comforting him. It is well with you. Do not fear. You will not die. Then Gideon built an altar at that place and called it Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. That same night, God spoke to Gideon again, commanding him to tear down the altar of Baal, which was on his father's land, and there to build another altar where the people might worship the Lord. And Gideon said he would do this, even though he knew how angry it would make all those who worship Baal. And because Gideon feared his family and the people of the town, he didn't dare to tear down the altar of Baal by daylight. But one night, with the help of ten loyal servants, Gideon tore down the altar of Baal and built an altar to the Lord. The next morning, when the people came to worship Baal and found their altar torn down and the pillar of their goddess Asherah destroyed, they were angry. Who did this? None of us would do such a thing. I know who did this. It was Gideon, the son of Joash. Gideon must die. Let us go into man of Joash, that he turn his son over to us. He's right. Gideon must die. So the worshippers of Baal hurried to Joash and demanded that he bring Gideon out to them, that they might kill him. But as Joash listened, he realized that Gideon had done what was right, and he spoke against Baal in defense of Gideon. Are you fighting for Baal? Are you going to save him? Whoever fights for Baal, let him be put to death. If Baal is a god, let him fight for himself, because his altar has been torn down. The worshippers of Baal realized that Joash's words were true. If the god they served were really god, wouldn't he have punished Gideon himself? So they began to have doubts about the power of Baal, and they no longer tried to punish Gideon. This left Gideon free to carry out God's plan, that he should lead Israel to victory over her enemies. Gideon's task was not an easy one. A large army of Midianites had crossed the Jordan and were camping in the valley of Jezreel. Moreover, the Amalekites and other tribes from the east had joined forces with them, so that Israel's defeat appeared certain. But filled with the spirit of the Lord, Gideon sent messengers throughout Israel to call the soldiers together. And while he waited for them, Gideon asked God for another proof that he was the man who should save Israel from the Midianites. If you really are going to use me to save Israel, as you said, then give me a proof. I will lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If dew falls only on the fleece and the ground all around it is dry, then I'll know that you will save Israel by me, as you have said. The next morning, Gideon hurried to the threshing floor where he had spread the wool fleece. To his surprise, the ground around the fleece was perfectly dry. But the fleece was so drenched with dew that the water wrung from it was enough to fill a bowl. Then Gideon asked God for still another proof. Don't be angry with me, O oh Lord, if I ask for one more thing. Please let me make another test with the fleece. Let it be dry only on the fleece. And let there be dew all over the ground. The next morning, Gideon again hurried to the fleece. This time, all the ground around was wet with dew, and only the fleece was dry. Then Gideon knew that God was ready to help him lead his people to victory.
The Israelites must have been confident that Gideon was acting under God's direction, for 32,000 men answered the call to arms. But God told Gideon that this was too many. A victory over the Midianites might seem to come from great numbers rather than from the Lord. Then God told Gideon to let all those who were afraid of the Midianites return home. And more than two-thirds of the soldiers did so. There were only 10,000 left. But God told Gideon, there are still too many. Take the soldiers down to the water. Place in one group everyone who laps up the water like a dog. And in another group, everyone who kneels down to drink. And there were 300 who lapped the water. All the rest knelt down to drink. Then God said to Gideon, By the 300 men who lapped the water, I will give you the victory. Let all the rest go home. 300 men seem very few compared to the large army of the Midianites. But that night, to reassure Gideon, God sent him and his servant Purah to the enemy camp where they overheard the Midianites talking. I had a drink. A cake of barley bread rolled into the camp of Midian. It struck a tent and turned it upside down. So that the tent laid flat. That means the sword of Gideon. A man of Israel. Into his hands, God's given the whole camp of Midian. When Gideon heard the dream explained, he knelt down and thanked the Lord. Then he hurried back to his camp to tell the Israelites the joyful news. Arise, for the Lord has given the whole camp of Midian to you. That night, the Israelites prepared for battle in a strange way. Each man carried a horn and a lighted torch hidden in a pitcher. At Gideon's command, they quietly marched toward the enemy's camp to surround it on three sides. And at midnight, when the Midianites were asleep, Gideon gave the signal for attack. The noise of the horns and the crashing of the pitchers and the glare of the torches, the shouting of Gideon's name, all this convinced the Midianites that they were surrounded by a great army. And so they ran away through the darkness, trampling and fighting each other in their confusion. Then Gideon sent messengers to the people of Israel, telling them to pursue the Midianites. And so Gideon and his people won a great victory, and once more, peace came to Israel. In their gratitude, the people of Israel wished to make Gideon their king. Rule over us, you, and then your son, and your grandson after you, for you have saved us from the Midianites. I will not rule over you. Nor will my son rule over you. The Lord is ruling over you. And so Gideon reminded his people that the Lord had delivered them and that they should faithfully serve him as their king. And the country had peace as long as Gideon lived and the people remained true to God. <laughs>